Hello and welcome to a scintillating five-hour evening of contemporary dance and avant-garde spoken word poetry. It's not, I just said that to remind you that things could be worse. Welcome to Only Connect. Playing tonight are, on my right, Alan Hay, a chemistry graduate whose favourite Christmas present as a child was Collins English Dictionary. Lindsay Baumeister, a spin class enthusiast whose father-in-law held a Guinness World Record for 37 years. And their captain, Alan Flanagan, a scriptwriter who injured himself on a Canadian stage while portraying the Queen of Spiders. All big fans of a murder mystery, they are the whodunits. Alan, you knocked out the walruses in a great fun show with a bravura performance in the Missing Vowels round. Was that always your favourite round? I like it. I think I like it too much because I have broken the button twice so far in the competition. <laughs> and what about the walls? Have you been enjoying those? Uh, very up and down. Sometimes breezy and lovely, sometimes horrible. Tonight you are playing to stay in the competition and you will be facing on my left. Laura Lawson, a law graduate who used to work at the Little Chef on the West Meon Hut Junction of the A272. Alexander Olive, a school and university's coordinator who owns a rare tube map that doesn't feature the River Thames. And their captain, Alex Thomas, a natural sciences graduate who has served Anish Kapoor a three-course meal at the Haywood Gallery. All enthusiastic wine drinkers, they are the corkscrews. Alex, this is a rematch. What do you remember from your previous game against the Whodunits? I remember they were very good at missing vowels. So, yeah, we've been trying to swat up on that. There was also a lot of lovely singing in that game, as I remember. Did you enjoy that? Was that something you particularly hoped would happen if you came to the show? No, I was, I was hoping it wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming back. Good luck, all of you, in this crucial match. Who done it? You won the toss, but you've decided to put your opponents in first. Corkscrews, please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Oh, Next, please. Next, please. Are these oh. people who play oh. themselves? He is. In... Oh, gosh. In what's it like? Extras or comic relief things? or Maybe. She did themselves. Should we get the next one? Yeah, next one. Yeah. Next, please. Oh, oh he, he, no, Neighbours. Oh, OK. So they all played those characters in Neighbours. They all appeared in cameo roles in Neighbours. Who's Andy Pipkin? Oh, gosh, um, he was the, uh, the two-part of the duo of Lou and Andy in Little Britain. Well, that's right. Uh, uh, Andy and Lou, they appeared in, uh, in an episode of Neighbours. Shane Warne as himself. The great Clive James, much missed Clive James, played a postman. He said it was the biggest audience he ever reached <laughs> when he was on Neighbours. And uh, do you know anything about Lord Ledgerwood? No. It was uh, a, a Derek Nemo's cameo role, Madge and Harold Bishop met Lord Ledgerwood and Derek Nimmo, who had actually been retired for some years, he accepted the role because he thought it would be a wonderful opportunity for a holiday in Australia. Yeah, sadly for him, the episode was filmed in rural Cheshire. <laughs> <laughs> All Neighbours cameos. Very well done. Who done it? What would you like? Uh, can we have the Twisted Flax, please? Yes, you can. The music question. You'll be hearing some lovely clues. What connects them? Here's the first. <laughs> Next. Oh, I can't Next. Next. seconds. Um, is it um, bullfighting? That is not the connection, I'm afraid. Corkscrews, do you know? Maria Callas. I'm not going to take it. It is possible that Maria Callas has played those parts, but I mean, they're all opera, and I think that's, that's not the connection we're looking for. No. You say uh, bullfighting, because we heard from Carmen, Carmen from BZ's mm. Carmen at the end, but the other operas, Tosca, Norma and Aida, what we were hearing was arias sung by those title characters. So no points there. But corkscrews, you may choose a question. Water, please. Water. What is the connection between these picture clues? 
Here's the first. Roots. That's for roots. Yeah. It's better if it's a turn. Oh, like a radish or something. Um, Next, please. Do you know me? There's a big old name of a city. So much city is that? It's not Mumbai's on the coast. Next, please. Oh, that's Mercury. Is that Mercury? Mercury. 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 Next, please. Two seconds. Uh, are these last names of singers in famous bands? Not it, I'm afraid. So, who done it? So, you have a bonus chance now. Is it something associated with madness? They are all said to cause madness in very old fashioned stories. What are we looking at? Uh, the moon, obviously. Mm hmm. And Mercury. And uh. Deal Lally was, was that the. Um... It's a camp, isn't it? It's where we get the phrase Do Lally. The British soldiers were waiting in Deal Lally or Do yeah. Lally. Whether that place caused the madness, I doubt. But the phrase Do Lally tap or Do Lally came from there. And what's that in the first picture? Kind of root. Oh, Mandrake. A mandrake root, that's exactly so. Yes, Mercury, that's, that's where we get the idea of mad as a hatter, because you get Mercury in hats. Apparently, in Turkey, camel hair was used for the felt that they made hats out of, and it was discovered that the felting process was speeded up if the fibres were moistened with camel urine. I mean, it's obvious, really, when you, when you think about it, isn't it? You put a bit of, a bit of camel wee in there, but it was said that in France, the workmen themselves weed on the hats. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them, would you? <laughs> they read on the hats. And there was one particular workman produced this very superior felt, and apparently he was being treated with a mercury compound for syphilis. And so oh they thought, God. oh, well, obviously, that's the reason. <laughs> that's the reason that the hats are so good. So that's why, apparently, that's why it said <laughs> that mercury is used in the hatting process. Well done. You get the bonus point. And what would you like for your own question? Um, the two reads. Two reads. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Pig, bag, bag, bog, bog. You can put all five vowels in the gap. Pit, pat, pet, pot, pot. Yes. Yes. Pig, bag, yes. bag, yes. bog. Do yes, it. do it, do it. Um, all five vowels will fit in that gap to make a word. Very well done. Coming in after two clues, you get three points. You can complete these words with any vowel. Pat, pet, pit, pot and put, big, bag, beg, bug and so on. They are words that you can put any vowel into to complete them. Well done. Corkscrews, what would you like next? The Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Switzerland's um, AG, Sweden is... Let's see. Yeah, so give them next, please. Sounds familiar almost. I don't know if we're from. Swedish silver, like one of those elements like discovered in Italy or something like that. So next please. Oh, are these the so this the the the, the, um, the symbols of those nations, so the Japanese. Because that's the one certainly is. Yeah. yeah, it's the name of the throne. It's the name of the throne of those countries. It's the name of the throne uh, of each of the of each of these countries. They are thrones. You didn't need to see the last clue. Mughal and Peacock. Yes, the Swedish throne, the silver throne, and it was introduced in 1650 for the coronation of Queen Christina. There were originally eight different thrones in Burma, but they were all destroyed. The lion throne survived, that was used. The chrysanthemum throne, it's sort of spoken of as a metonym for the monarchy, it was also literally the throne, the chrysanthemum throne. And the peacock throne, that was built in the early 1600s seat of the Mughal Empire. All thrones, well done. One question remains for you, who done it? What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. French. Okay, this one. Next. Chicago O'Hare Airport. O'Hare is the airport in Chicago, but why is there? Do they have any initials? Go to. Oh. Um, go to the next one. Um, next. The Lindy Hop. Oh yeah. Um. Are you sure? Are you got it? Yeah. Okay. They are uh, named after aviators. They are named after aviators. What do you think would have been clue four? Um, uh, Charles de Gaulle. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other way around. That's, the other way around. <laughs> That's an airport named after someone who wasn't an aviator. No, far more important than Charles de Gaulle. Anyway, Orville the Duck yeah. would, have been, uh, would have been the fourth clue. Um, what can you tell me about the aviators in these the clues? Lindy Hop was uh, Charles Lindbergh. Mm -hmm. 
the... And there was a headline, it, uh, Lindy Hops the Atlantic, Atlantic yeah. and that's where the uh, dance name came from. Uh, Roland Garros, obviously, was an aviator. That's right, he was a pilot in the First World War. He, he died in combat in 1918, and they, they named it French Open site after him. O'Hare. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of O'Hare as a... That was an American World War II pilot, Edward Butch O'Hare, all named after aviators. And why was Orville the Duck named after Orville Wright? Because he couldn't fly. Fly. He wished he could fly oh. right up to the sky, but that he couldn't. <laughs> well done. That means at the end of round one, the corkscrews have three points. The whodunits have six. <laughs> On to the sequences round now. What comes forth in a sequence? Corkscrews will be going first again. What would you like? Lion, please. Lion. We'll be seeing the first in a sequence of clues. I want to know what comes forth. Time starts now. Next, please. It's a song, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we have to get the next one? Yeah. yeah. Next, please. Uh, oh, is it from, um, is that is it from Train Spotting? Oh, don't. It's not like Keisha song, is it? Like Wake Up in the Morning and. Uh, I don't know. But if it was from Train Spotting, what would the fourth one be? Oh, no, maybe it is Keisha. Keisha. Um, we're not coming back. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not coming back? I mean, this reminds me of a few nights in my student days. It's not the connection I'm looking for, so a bonus chance for you who done it. Get drunk again. Um, get drunk again? I mean, <laughs> I can only salute the That's optimism the there. But no, do you know what it is? No, uh, I saw song. some lyrics, but... When I wake up, well, I know I'm going to be... I'm going to be, be the man who wakes oh, up next to you. Yeah. OK, why don't we sing it and see what word we get to? One, <laughs> two, three. When, when I, I get, get drunk. drunk. <laughs> I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who gets up next to you. And, and if I, I have her, then I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the man who's havering to you. Do you know what haver means, Alan? I thought it was, I thought it was have her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Hashtag B2. <laughs> However, it's a Scottish word. Do, do, you, do you know other, Alan? It just it means procrastinate. Well, that's it. It's just sort of to kind of babble on, you know, to talk on, on about nothing in particular. Is it haver? I think they sing haver in the song. I say haver. I say haver. They say haver. No. We say haver. No, yeah. Let's call the whole thing off. What would you like for your next question? The Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. OK, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. P4, what did that stand for? Next. P3, brandy. Is this quite some kind of port type thing? Classifications. It could be port at the end. Like pale or something? So what would P1 be? I think we need I'm going to go for next anyway. Next. P2, scotch whiskey. P1 could be Irish whiskey. This could be, oh, it could be how many times that they're, um, is there a thing about triple distilled? Scotch whiskey still used. Um, so I'm going to think of Irish whiskey. I found P1 Irish whiskey. Yeah. P1 Irish whiskey. Not it, I'm afraid. Paul screws, do you know? P1 vodka. That's not it either. Problem for your team, too much wine, not enough pims. These are PIMS Ooh. cups. When people buy PIMS now, it says PIMS number one on the bottle and its main constituent part is gin. But there used to be other ones. So there was PIMS ah. two, which had whiskey in it, mm. three was brandy, four was rum. Uh, and, uh, you know, I need hardly remind our viewers that other sorts of alcohol are available. <laughs> God knows we've, we've driven them to them on many occasions. Corkscrews, what would you like? Twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. These are going to be picture clues. What would you expect to see? The fourth picture is the first. Next, please. Next, please. Damien Hurst. Damien Hurst, doesn't it? Um, so who, who painted the first one? Howells, H.A. Ellis. Mm. So I think by George Houseman, surely. Houseman, maybe? Because yeah. we're going through the. Oh, no. Um, Holmes, Holbein, go with everything with Holbein. Uh, Alex, a picture by Hans Holbein. A picture by Hans Holbein would be an acceptable answer. We've got a picture by David Hockney. Why would either of them be acceptable? Because we're going H.A. 
H-E-H-I-H-O. That's exactly right. Who are the artists responsible for the other works? We've got Franz Howells, The Laughing Cavalier. Mm -hmm. We think it might be something by Hepworth. It's Barbara Hepworth. That's Rose Wall, uh, which is a sort of curved, reclining form that was commissioned for the post office and unveiled in 1963. Uh, a clue three, of course. Um, something by Damien Hirst. Yeah, that's right. Away from the flock. That's uh, Damien Hirst, the, the sort of controversial pickled sheep in formaldehyde, and uh, something by uh, Holbein or Hockney or anyone beginning H O. Well done. What would you like? Who done it? Uh, can we have the two reads? I don't see why not. What would be the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Yeah, next. That and legs on NATO, whatever. Um, uh, different colours, different anything at all. Um, next. Yorkshire. <laughs> is, it, is the word on being used in a different way than we're thinking? Maybe. Um, on six. Oh, I don't know. Anything that's something to do. No, no. It's, it's in short names. Um, so six. six. On, is, I know what a, it is. A, a county where the a place where the abbreviation is six letters. Yes. Not it, I'm afraid. So, Court Cruise, do you want to have a go for a bonus? Six on Israel. The answer is six on Israel, and why? So it's sort of the number of points of the insignia on each of the flags. So the flag of the Isle of Man is sort of three legs sprawling out. Mm -hmm. uh, NATO is a compass, so four points on a compass. Mm -hmm. The white rose on the York flag of Yorkshire has five points, mm -hmm. uh, and there are six points on the Star of David, which is on the flag of Israel. That's exactly right, it's to do with the points. So, or you might say, the orders of rotational symmetry as well. You can turn it, it's the same. And so something with six points or six orders of symmetry, for example, the Mog and Dovid on the flag of Israel. So you get a bonus point and you get your own question. What would you like? Water, please. Water. OK, what will come forth in this sequence is the first. Next, please. Something. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah. Next, please. Oh, these are the same races. Shergar, maybe. Sorry? Shergar. Oh, I don't know. These oh, are winners of the Grand National. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. Right. Sure? Does it all clear off? Is it all clear off? Is it all clear off? I said Shergar, but I don't think it is Shergar, is it? I, I, I feel yeah. like Desert Orchid is more likely. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> Desert Orchid? Not the answer, I'm afraid. Who done it? Do you know? Shergar. And it's not Shergar. <laughs> well, blast from the past that was. Uh, they are consecutive winners of the Grand National. So they're the horses that won it in back to back years. Of course, Red Run won it more than that. But for this, the Colonel won twice in 1869 and 1870, Reynolds Town in 1935 and 1936, and so on. And the next horse would be. Tiger Roll, great horse that won in 2018 and 2019. I tell you who's got a great record in the Grand National, Sam Whaley Cohen, cousin of our question editor, Jack Whaley Cohen, although they're very different. Oh, Mr Whaley Cohen is not interested in horse racing. He prefers to stay away from skittish, flighty creatures who whinny and snort as they compete at the highest level. Anyway, back to the teams. <laughs> uh, who done it? So one question remains, the Horned Viper, that's for you. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. George Clinton. Um, is that George Clinton's middle name? No. 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 Um, George Bush. Bill Clinton. So yeah. Yeah. Something, something yeah. 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 Um, Next. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr, sir. So he's in. Um, he's in Hamilton. Yeah. Um, so is a character. Um, could it be signings of the Declaration of Independence? Could be. Could be John Hancock. Um, no. Um, next. 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 <clears throat> Thomas it's Jefferson. John Hancock, because that's a signature on there. He's got to be. He's got his third dish. It's famously the first to have done it. Or is it Agatha Hamilton? I don't know. Mm. What the sequence been? Two seconds. Hancock. And we're going to say John Hancock. Not it, I'm afraid. Cork's good. Is chance of bonus? John Adams? It is John Adams, and why? Because of uh, the first four vice presidents of the United States um, going backwards uh, until you get to the first one. Vice presidents going backwards. And who were the presidents to which these were the vices? So John Adams is 
George Washington, mm -hmm. then Thomas Jefferson to John Adams, mm -hmm. Aaron Burr to Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. and then George Clinton was also for Thomas Jefferson? That's exactly right. That means at the end of round two, the whodunits have six points, the corkscrews have seven. <laughs> time for the connecting wall, and you'll be going first this time. Whodunits, would you like lion or water? Lion, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. Sam and Fever, Torn Curtain, The Maltese Falcon, Fury, Notorious, Fury. Right. Can you put uh, Torn Curtain, Psycho, Notorious and Frenzy? Um, Psycho, Notorious and Frenzy. Are we thinking Hitchcock, is it? Yeah. Ladders, um, Salmon Ladder, Jacob's Ladder. Step Ladder, Salmon Ladder. Rope Ladder, Attic ladder. ladder. OK, I'll go through those five. Do you see a fifth Hitchcock? We can put that on yes, this, yes. yeah? OK. Right, so for the Hitchcock, do Rope, Frenzy, Torn Curtain, Psycho. And then do we have a fifth that we're thinking yeah, about? Yeah, Notorious is another one. OK, so I'll go through that five and then you guys keep talking. Fever, yeah. mania, fury, turmoil, all kind yes. of uh, synonyms, aren't they? Fever, yes. mania, fury, turmoil, mania, psycho, psycho and maybe. fever. Um, well, turmoil, psycho. fury, mania and fever all seem... Because psycho is, is a noun rather than... Is, is, a, yeah. is a person rather than a, a, an abstract noun. Multi fucking but interesting. Uh, is there anything in the words that we're, not, that we're missing? Oh, no, no. I don't think there were psychos in Greek mythology in that way then. Um, American Psycho, no. Um, uh, Scarlet Fever, Scar uh, Interesting. Was, was, was any of them snooker? Snooker nicknames, Interesting was Steve Davis. Was any of them called the Maltese Falcon? Angles could have been a snooker player nickname. Which one? Try Fever, Mania, Fury and Turmoil just to check yeah. out those four. Um, or I can just hold the Maltese Falcon. I just well, think... F Fury is a, is a film about... Uh, about World War II, but I can't remember. Oh, so is the Maltese Falcon a war film as well? Or it could no, be someone in them. Uh, quite interesting QI, there's that. So I'm going to try this anyway. Oh. You solved the wall. Very well done, you seem surprised. <laughs> but that is uh, the correct solution. What yes, about the connections? Yes. Salmon, Step, Jacob's Attic. They are all ladders. They are. And the next group, Torn Curtain, Notorious, Frenzy and Rope. They That's are Hitchcock. all Hitchcock films. Hitchcock films. They are films by Alfred Hitchcock. Fever, fury, mania, turmoil. They are all kind of madness. states of mind of madness. Agitated states of mind, synonyms for each other. And the last group, the Maltese we, Falcon, really think it's Psycho. Well, I, believe players. Players. I believe those are snooker players. Nicknames. nicknames. They are nicknames for snooker players. Very well done. Do you know which players? Steve, Steve Davis, Davis is interesting. Interesting. Psycho, Peter... Ebden. Peter Ebden, yes, apparently. Mm. Um, the Maltese Falcon, Tony Drago. Oh, yes. of course. Yes. And yes. Angles, Alan McManus. So you found all the groups and you gave me the four connections, so that is the maximum of ten points. Won't be such a stressful missing vowels this time. <laughs> Let's bring in their opponents and give them the other wall, see how they get on. Corkscrews, you will have the water wall. You've got two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. Hey, Hazen, Shackleton, Shackleton. Um, any, any other scores Scott, on here? Scott. Uh, oh, Scott. Uh, um, Um, so should we move on? Should we move on? Yeah. Okay, so courtyard, so square, piazza, quad. Yeah. Or plaza. Or well, plaza. And forum. Could be forum. Um, uh, we've got we've got um, characters in parks and recreation, oh, okay. or plays, or actors in oh, parks yeah. and recreation. Oh okay. yeah. So Pola, Anzari. Oh, uh, Pola, Anzari, uh, Ross, and Scott. Um, or Bird instead of Scott. Not like the Arctic. No. Oh. Okay, right. Have you, um, have you got kind of waves or patterns like sine waves and yes, sort of sine wave, and triangle? Square wave, yeah, you can have square oh. wave, a triangle wave. And, uh, triangle sawtooth. Okay, there we go. Three lives now. So, so yeah, we've Scott comes in Shackleton. Um, except we don't know we don't know another polar explorer, so let's try it the other way around, shall we? Yes. There's, there's Ross is a uh, no, Ross possibly, but yeah. So Polar and Sari. Oh, uh, Plaza's one, Aubrey Plaza. Oh. Right. So one of Beard and one of Ross. And we've got three goes. There's, there's, there's Ross so, C, isn't there? So that might so, be so, so, someone. Okay, so um, okay. Ansari Polar Plaza, and another one is actors from Commu actors from what? Oh, Parks and Rec. Okay. And the other one is going to be Arctic Explorers. Okay. okay. So not that one, so with Ross. Oh, oh no, gosh. Okay. Um, okay, so Amazon Shackleton. I think there's a Ross. A bird? Bird sounds like, yeah. But we I think, really I think, was, no. I think we tried that. We've got 30 seconds. Uh, you, did you I'm, try I'm that not sure now, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, okay, well, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. going to guess it as a last one. Do we do Scott and Bird and Emerson Shackleton? 
think so. Yes, yes, we okay. did. Shall I go okay. with this one? Go, go, go. Uh, oh, solve the wall. Very well done. Now, what about the connections? Tell me about courtyard, piazza, and so on. So different sort of uh, squares or sort of... Uh, public places. Public, public places, Public yeah. spaces, exactly so. And the next group, square, triangle, sign and sawtooth. These different types of different shapes of waves. They are waveforms, exactly so. Amundsen, Shackleton, Ross, Bird. Uh, all, all explorers. Uh, Antarctic explorers? I'll take explorers. They're best known for the Antarctic, but they are all explorers. Scott, Polar, Plaza, Ansari. Is that actors from...? Parks and Recreation. From Parks and Recreation, exactly so. So very well done, you get the maximum of 10 points. Let's have a look at the scores going into the final round. The Whodunits have 16 points, the Corkscrews have 17. So six great players quizzing at the top of their powers. It's really close. I'm very sorry that any of you have to go home, but three of you do. Missing vowels time. Fingers on buzzers teams. I can tell you that the first group of disguised clues are all lies. Who done it? Porky Pie. Correct. Who done it? Alternative fact. Yes, it is. Corkscrews. Fake news. Of course. Corkscrews. I agree. Yes, it is. Next category: Marx Brothers and March Sisters. Who done it? Groucho and Beth. Beth. Well done. Who done it? Chico and Meg. Meg. Correct. Who done it? Gummo and Joe. Yes, it is. Who done it? Harpo and Amy. Correct. Next category: Spice Girls. Corkscrews. Seth from um... Burroughs. I can't take that. I'm afraid you lose a point. Who done it? Do you know? Saffron Burroughs. Yes, it is. <laughs> Who done it? Nigella Lawson. Correct. <laughs> Who done it? Ginger Rogers. Yes. Corkscrews. Victoria Beckham. Well done. Next category: 16 letter words. Corkscrews. Declassification. Very good. Who done it? Graphically. Yes, it is. Corkscrews. No time to give me the answer. Ostentatiousness, because we've heard the sound that means it's the end of the quiz. And the winners with 26 points, the first team through to the semi finals of this year's Only Connect are the Who Done It. Very well played. More great missing vowels action from you. Corkscrews, I am so sorry to lose you. You have been a brilliant team. You're all super clever and really nice. And thank you so much for coming to play. Thank you very much for watching this exciting match. And I leave you with the apt words of the great Jack Donaghy from 30 Rock. There are many kinds of intelligence, practical, emotional, and then there's actual intelligence, which is what I'm talking about. Good night.